Judy, is it time to garden? No, Ryan, it's garden time. Welcome to Garden Time. We're at the Oregon Garden for their annual Art in the Garden that's happening now through Labor Day. And we just love this Garden Time steak. And coming up later in the show, Judy and I will be talking to a couple of local artists about their art down here at the gardens. And also coming up in the show today, we'll be talking about pollinators. We'll also be visiting Seabright Gardens and their summer event that's happening today. But coming up first, Jan's Tips of the Month. Well, it is the cusp of summer, and I'm with Jan McNeilan. So, Jan, you know, we always have things to do, and you always have interesting things. So what do you have for us? Well, several things here. Um, what we're going to do is talk a little bit about diagnosing plant problems mm. and treating plant problems. And so what I suggest people do is make sure they understand what the problem is, if they have a problem, mm. and that whatever treatment, if any, they might be insecticidal soap. But if they decide to use a, a um, even if it's an organic pesticide, to see what that actually can treat. So some of them that will be a broad spectrum insecticide and some will be more specific like BT for larval stages. And so um, just to make sure that you know what you're treating for. Right. And that you're not using a bigger gun than you need to. Right. And read the label. We always tell you to read the label. Right. And then it's all that information. They spend, chemical companies spend lots of money right. to do all that research. Right. And here's an example. Um, I have a clematis that uh, succumbed to aphids more than I have ever seen on anyone I've ever had. And so I actually took it out. And then I looked on another one and I've been spraying it with insecticidal soap, first of water, then insecticidal soap, and then realized the other day there are ladybug larvae all over it eating the aphids. Ah. So be careful. So also know what a ladybug larva looks like and that it's doing, it can eat a lot more aphids than the adult beetle can. Ah. So there's lots of good predators out there for you. So really observe the plant and see what is there. Yeah, such great idea because you want the natural world to take care of Absolutely. the problem. Absolutely, and, and there's a lot of pre predators that'll help you do that. Neat. But you have to be able to identify what they look like. Yeah, and there's lots of apps or, you know, just go to your independent garden center to try to find out what's, what's going on. Okay, and then the other thing is that I have a new problem that I never oh. had before. Hmm. And I know people are going to laugh because they've had rabbit problems oh. before, but we have never had them in this neighborhood in the 60 some odd years <gasps> I've oh lived here, gosh. and now they're everywhere. So I'm putting floating row covers over my lettuce and being a little more careful so that I, I'm, I don't think I can talk them out of eating some <laughs> of the stuff that's there, and they're really reproducing. But we also have coyotes, so I think there's mm. my, a natural predator there, there too, so I'm not so sure how we're going to do that. <laughs> Um, one thing, I ran out of big pots this year. Oh, look at this. So I actually decided I would get some of the cloth bags and try those out. So I have a Goliath, a bush Goliath tomato planted in the back um, garden um, in one of them. And then I planted a dahlia in the other just to see what it'll do. So yeah, it's just fun. an experiment this That's, year to see how that works. Yeah, so I mean it's it's something to do and, and try. It's always fun to experiment. Right, and then you can dump the soil and save it to um, mix with other potting soil next year and then it, they fold up and store. So nice, it's yeah, pretty good. Definitely. Yeah, one thing I will say, you need to water them every day because they, oh. unlike other pots, they don't hold the moisture, they actually leak the moisture. Oh yeah, so you're really yeah. losing a lot more moisture right. everywhere. Right, exactly. And then one more thing is uh, there's the famous June drop. Right, it's June. For, um, for apples. And if you find that they're dropping from your apple tree, it's because they're not pollinated. Oh. And this is just a little one. But here you see, well, there's more. It takes three seeds to carry that fruit through. If not, it'll drop. Ah, because it's not, it's not it's pollinated. Not yeah, so, not pollinated. Ah. 
So, so that's the uh, famous June drop. Well, and there's a reason behind it. It's not just because they're dropping. It's because they're not viable to carry on absolutely. the genetic material. Right, absolutely. And also, if you're apt to thin your apples, which a lot of people do, they just want maybe two per spur, then um, this is sort of a natural thinning process. Right, right. Huh. And yeah. so the tree's telling us all what to do. You know, plants and insects are just so interesting and they're so smart and so intelligent. We kind of forget that. So really go out and look at your plants and maybe you don't have to spray or you maybe you don't have to thin your apple trees. So thanks so much, Dan. It's always so interesting. See you next month. Thank you. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hi, I'm Sarah with Portland Nursery, where our passion for plants has kept us rooted in this incredible community. A lot has changed since we first opened our doors, but through it all, we've remained family owned and operated, dedicated to providing our neighbors the largest selection of the highest quality plants Portland has to offer. With hundreds of new plants arriving each week, you're guaranteed to find something exciting and unique. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants at 50th and Stark, 90th and Division. You can use water wisely this summer with these simple tips. Periodically, check your watering system to make sure it is working correctly. Tighten hose connections and adjust sprinklers to water plants and not the pavement. Give your lawn and garden a deep soak twice weekly instead of watering daily. Skip the fertilizer until the fall and mow your lawn less often. Taller grass holds moisture in longer between waterings. Get more water-wise gardening tips at regionalh2o.org. Since 1982, the wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, the wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. Well, I'm out here at Portland Nursery Division. I'm with Sarah. And Sarah, this spring, you know, we've you know, had a lot of plants we put in our yard and the temperatures are starting to warm up and we're gonna, looks like we're gonna have a nice warm summer. So what do we need to be doing to make sure we, our plants are gonna survive through the summer? Yeah, great question. Um, because we are looking at a possible drought this year and if you've got those new plants, you really wanna make sure and protect your investment by giving them regular water, um, especially with these high temperatures that we're just kind of jumping into. So we've got a lot of different options here. Um, I think the, one of the easiest ones would be a, a soaker hose, which you really just lay out and the water seeps into the soil. The number one thing that goes wrong with soaker hoses is people move them around too often or bend them and then they'll break because they're very porous. Okay. So you wanna be really gentle and um, when you're laying them out, but they're a really great, easy option. And it actually took me less time to set up a soaker hose than to actually water my garden one time. Right. So it, the investment will pay right. off. Um, we've also got obviously some, this is not necessarily self-watering, but some things you do still need to spot water. This is right. a really good tool for that. Um, and because yeah, you have a lot, a lot of ways that you can do, do hand watering, and, you know, and, that, and that can be nice for, you know, certain, certain areas or some pots or maybe not doing your whole yard, but if you mm -hmm. need a little touch up. Yeah. Just little areas here and there, and it can be really relaxing as well. Um, to, and just go around and give some extra right. water when you need to. But something like this can really easily hook up to a hose as well. And you can hook it up to a timer. You could hook any of this stuff up to a timer. So right. you could be on vacation and still having your yard be getting, getting water. Um, but you can also just turn the hose on and off. So if you just go out there, turn on the hose, come back a few minutes later, turn it right. off. And that's just easy peasy. Because that will just cover a nice big, bigger area and you'll just full on just water whatever is there, right? Yeah, and I should mention, I guess this would be you know, obviously we're all familiar with the sprinkler. The leaves would get wet with this. Thing I love about soaker hose is, like I put it under my tomatoes where they don't really like water on their leaves. Right. So it can be a good situation for that. Yeah, so it looks like we have some great options for doing some hand watering. And you have a lot of options for, you know, like overhead watering for larger areas. But it looks like you have a whole nother section here for drip. 
Yes, we do. And this looks really uh, overwhelming, but really all it is is determining how much water is going out per hour. So um, different hose sizes, smaller ones will give less water, bigger ones will give a higher flow. But then you also want to pay attention to like the colors on here, which are just telling you how many gallons per hour are coming out. So like red is half gallon per hour, green is two gallons per hour. So really figuring out what your plant is going to need and then getting the right equipment for that. And we are here to help you with that, you know, and even if you come in knowing what you what you need, we can still just walk yeah. you through it. If you need and it, it. You know, <laughs> it looks like, you know, like you said, you know, it could be a little a little complicated, but, you know, it's a little maybe a little more work to set up in the in the front end, but there's a lot of benefits of drip. It's so worth it. I actually put off drip for a long time and um, it saves so much time, so much money. I mean, water is expensive, especially in the Portland area, and you're really not looking at a, a huge investment for this. Um, and then, yeah, it's just good for the environment all, all around. Right. You know, because it's determining, you know, what each plant needs, you know, because all plants are different. You know, mm -hmm. newly planted ones or ones that have been in the ground a long time require different water needs. And you guys here, your staff is very knowledgeable and can help you determine what kind of needs, needs your plant needs and what kind of system might be best for you. So, you know, for more information on, on watering and making sure you have the, the best system for your needs, you know, come on down to Portland Nursery, either the Stark Street or the Division Street. You know, they'll help you set out the, the best system for you and your irrigation to make sure your plants are successful this summer. So thank you, Sarah, for being down here. Thanks. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. Ryan, you need to brush up your look. Ryan, that is better. It's always better when you show off your Garden Time pride. Check out the Garden Time store on our webpage for a great selection of Garden Time gifts and apparel. Choose a hoodie, shirt, hat, bag, or mask for yourself or as a gift for the Garden Time fan in your life. See the complete selection on the Garden Time website. Pick up some Garden Time gear and show your Garden Time pride. Since 1929, Grimm's Fuel has powered great gardens around our area. With our comprehensive composting and yard debris services, we can apply quality garden mulch, compost, and blended soils with our experienced crews and trucks, including our landscape rock and bark products as well. We're proud of our industry-leading, state-of-the-art composting facilities. We also can take care of your fuel oil and firewood needs. Grimm's Fuel, building great gardens since 1929. We're down here at the Oregon Garden. It's art in the garden. I'm with Mary Mo, And Mary, you have some really cool art. Why don't you tell us about what kind of art you have? Well, thanks. Um, I basically am into reclaimed art. Um, I, all my life, my dad was an old engineer and he never threw anything away and I inherited a lot of his widgets and gizmos and I've been going to reclaimed art shows for years and uh, collecting art and finally when I got close to retirement I thought I need to start making some with all this stuff I have. Right. So and it's, it's, it's very whimsical. <laughs> Exactly, and my dad was an inveterate punster as well. So if, if art has brightness and joy and f makes you laugh, it's even better, I think. Yeah, so what, what are some of the pieces? Talk, show well, some of the my pieces main that pieces that I love to do are my birdhouses. I call them bird abodes. And uh, I make all the, the boxes from old fence, fence boards, use bottle caps, usually organ brewers. Nice. They all have metal roofs and old hardware on them unpopped rivets. I do a lot of fun stuff. Stamp metal. Got to put the got to put the name. This is from my favorite beer this year by the way. It's a Neon Daydream Hazy Ale. So it, it looks like you know there's a wide range. There's no yeah. two pieces that are the same. No all... two pieces are the same. I mean I may make a similar house again like the Pelican house type thing or what I call my hoe houses. Funny little hoe. Old lamp pieces, old picture frame moldings. This is old uh, molding from making ceiling 
uh, cove oh, yes. molding. So I do. And those. then you also have some yard stakes. I do yard stakes. Yeah, I do little teeny tiny houses. These are little leftover blocks of wood and little leftover pieces of picture frame molding and metal, and do those. And I do some fun wood ones too. Well, these are what I call my joy stakes, and I take old reused garden stakes, um, scrap wood, scrap metal, and make little happy joy stakes. And so if you make a pot happy, you stick a stake in it. You know, and you, so you have some great pieces of art. So if people that are coming to the garden want to purchase some art, how, how does that work? Well, you go to any of the art installations, you pick the piece of art that you like, and take it up to the entrance to the gift shop and purchase it on your way out. And then how long is your art going to be on display? It's going to be on display every day until Labor Day. That's great. You know, and we're going to throw it down to Judy. Judy's with another artist, and we're going to go see some more amazing art down here at the garden. Thank you, Ryan. And now I'm with Mo Herlis. And Mo, these are such unique metal art pieces. So how did you get started like, making these creations? You know, I just started out on the workbench with some pliers and pipe and washers and made some little figures and stuff. And it just kind of progressed as I went along to where I would find things and just throw things together and make it, and if I didn't like it, I didn't like it. If I liked it, I made it again, and um, I ran across these insulators and thought, what am I going to do with those? And then I found these wagon wheel rims at an auction. I bought some, and I got the plow disc from farmers, and so 80% of the stuff is recycled. Um, for me, the thrill is the garage sales and estate sales and going picking and making it, so you've got, like, this wagon wheel could be from the 1940s. This Whoa. was probably a rear wooden wagon with a cover top. That's the rears. The smaller ones are front. You'll find some that are narrower. Those are off the buggies. Like when you watch a Western, you oh, see sure. the lady with the buggy. So there's a variety of different ones and, and different things. And it's just um, creativity. And there's a pile of junk and there's a pile of good. So it's... <laughs> But you have that eye because you went around, uh, there's all, so many pieces here at the garden, and you knew what all these pieces went to. I mean, I knew a horseshoe, but you knew they're from this or from that, and it's like you make bird baths and garden art, and they're also just clever and cool. Thank you. And so when you see something, do you have something in your mind's eye, or does it take a while to kind of all coalesce? It's a little bit of both, really. Sometimes I'll go to a garage sale and find some stuff and think, okay, better not let this go, and then I'll take it home and it'll sit in the shop for six months, and then one day I'll walk out and go, that could be a good flower, or that could be a good planter, or that could be part of a bench, or, so there, there's a, a lot of stuff that I have that I pick through, and sometimes I see it, like the piece I showed you earlier, I had the metal for three months, and I woke up one night thinking, I wanna make a football thing out of it, and <laughs> so I did it, and it worked out, and it's what, probably one of my best pieces I've ever made, so uh, it's... Um, you're always thinking. Yeah, something's going on. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, it's fun. I enjoy it. Really, it's, it's good therapy. <laughs> but you know, all the art here at Art in the Garden at the Oregon Garden is unique and very clever. And you can come now through Labor Day and you can see all the art on the art walk. You can even purchase them at the gift shop and just enjoy the garden and enjoy all the art there. So for more information, please go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to the garden website and you can find out all that information. Come out and see Mo's art for sure. Thanks so Thank much, you. Mo. Appreciate it. Many of us like to eat and harvest out of our gardens our fruit and berry plants, but sometimes our furry friends like to eat them too. So a couple tips we can use to help deter those is one by using this large owl, and this will help deter some of the, the birds because they see this as a threatening predator. You know, another tip you can use or you can get is a scare tape. These you can pick up at your local independent garden center. And this is just a flashy reflective tape. And it comes in a roll. All you have to do is just cut off little strips and strings and then tie it to the plant. And what that does, the light will hit it, the wind blows it, and it will help deter those, those uh, birds from eating. And another flashy item is to use an old CD. We all have them, and you don't even have to take a trip to your local independent garden center. You just hang these in the tree or the shrub, and it'll reflect the light just like the scare tape does. And if you really want to take those birds and keep them out of the plants, is you could drape a bird netting over the plant, and it will prevent the birds from getting at the fruit. Well, these are just a few tips that will let you keep all the fruit for yourself.
Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. At Capital Subaru, we are family. It's not all about selling cars here. It's about our community and our families. We keep you moving. With a Subaru, it's always, what are you going to do next? And with our new space, we'll get you service faster than ever before. And we are growing. With over 72,000 square feet and 30 new service space. Our new location is opening later this spring. I can't wait. It's a new year and it's going to be awesome. At Capital Subaru, we are your way on the parkway. Judy, what are you doing? You said to follow you. Follow us on Facebook. Oh, man. Well, we invite all of our viewers to follow the Garden Time page on Facebook. And on our Facebook page, you'll find links to stories, you'll see upcoming events, and you also might even find a funny joke or two. So don't forget, go to the gardentime.tv webpage and click the link for Facebook. Little Baja is your source for a whole lot of terracotta and concrete, too. From bird baths and benches to Buddhas, bears, and fountains, plus the exclusive Baja chimney, we have an amazing variety of the finest in terracotta and concrete containers. Come check out our selection of statuary for any garden theme or setting. So for something for the garden, deck, or patio, come see us at Little Baja on East Burnside in Portland. Find us on Facebook, too. I'm at Seabright Gardens today with Kirk, and Kirk, I love coming any time of the year, but this year especially, the gardens are beautiful, and so are the plants. Hot days, cool plants. Ah, you're very good. It is uh, hot today, but it's, they have so much nice shade and cover here. It's a lovely experience, even on a hot day. Exactly, absolutely, yeah. So what do you have for us? So we just have a few cool plants we, uh, that I thought I'd bring out today. Um, we have um, some dwarf ginkgos here. There's several varieties of dwarf ginkgos we carry. Uh, Spring Grove is one of ours in the garden. It's, it's one of the bigger ones. It gets up to six feet about. Oh, not bad at yeah, all. Yeah, great fall color, that bright gold fall color. It's nice because the, the standard ones get so big and it, everybody's gardens are shrinking. Exactly, so yeah, nice yeah. It's dwarfs. great if you, if you live in a city lot or a lot that size that you know you want a really nice tree it's that's low maintenance it's a great tree for that oh perfect yeah yeah perfect. absolutely yeah well then we have to talk about lilies Lilies, of course yeah i just have a couple varieties here we have several varieties they're just coming in bloom now these mm. ones are earlier ones but they'll start blooming now into mid mid july Pretty. so yeah some of the margaritigans are blooming as well in the shade oh. garden so. oh and really lilies for sun or shade that's, that's exactly very nice. yeah absolutely yeah absolutely yeah and the silbies are starting to bloom these ones here are early blooming varieties and they come in such a variety of colors, the astilbes. We've got purple, pinks, reds. I don't have white here, um, but we have, you know, there's several shades of, of colors and some have nice foliage. The foliage in the spring then they come out, a lot of them have the bronze tones and chocolate tones and purple tones, so, which adds to the, it does. adds to the, uh, to the effect. And yeah. they almost look like another fern in the garden. Yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah, very plumy uh, foli uh, flowers. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. And then I see there's some plants for the sun yeah. down there. Yeah, we got a Monarda here. Um, great for the sun. It has a nice fragrance to it as well. Low maintenance plant and another sun plant. I just, I really like carnations. You always see them in bouquets. Uh -huh. And this one's Pinball Wizard. And they bloom so long. And, you know, it's like, it's nice to see them in the garden as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And even a cut flower? Absolutely. Yeah, you can cut it as a flower or nice. just enjoy it in the garden, whatever oh. you prefer with their. They Are just bloom and bloom and bloom and it's just a good low maintenance plant for the sun. Nice, yeah, nice. absolutely, yeah. And we have to talk about hostas because oh, yeah. I mean, hostas we start, are your key here. We start out in hostas, so we, <laughs> we definitely, yeah, we're known as the hosta nursery, so. And we have a few different sizes here. This is a large one called Imperial Palace. Wow. Um, yeah, in fact, I, I thought this would be a great one in a pot, so I put one in a pot to, I this week as well. I love that pot. It, yeah. It's very nice. Yeah, and then uh, this is one we introduced. I got similar colors here all mm -hmm. this is a medium this is large medium large is a tangerine tango it's one of our introductions oh, cute. It's nice thick leaves it's just and then a, a, a smaller one a medium size is a cream topping and then i pulled out a blue mouse here is here oh, so the sweet. flowers are it's going to be blooming here in a couple of weeks and the flowers are so nice on it if you like you know you don't buy hostas for the flowers but this one is so cute we they sell well the blue mouse here, but when they're blooming, they just fly out fly. of here, and we're we're sold out by 
you know, way down on, uh, after, after they're done blooming, so. Uh, and yeah. really, if you have a small pot or a small garden, that's a perfect one. Exactly, Definitely. absolutely. Yeah, or along a border or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever works well for you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And what is this striped flower uh, plant with the pink This flowers? is a Silene Clifford Moore. I, I, never, I never heard of them, and I never see them in anyone's garden, but they're such a low maintenance plant. I've grown them in full sun to, mm -hmm. to full shade. I don't know what they like because they seem to work well in <laughs> all those environments. Like, I think they like some sun, but, but like I said, I've grown them in full, full sun to full shade. Um, there's periwinkle flowers that, mm -hmm. that bloom. The, they're just about done blooming. The blooms are really close to the foliage, and, and now they're... Um, but, and they're evergreen, too, or, or nearly evergreen here nice. in, in our area. So. Nice. And I know we have some other plants here. We have pensamins and fuchsias, which yeah. are lovely, and you have so many flowering things, all kinds of different plants. But today is a very special day, so tell us what's going on today. So we have the uh, beginning of summer, um, plant sale and garden art festival. Oh, yep. wow. Yep. So what's going to happen? So we have several uh, several vendors from different nurseries. One, uh, we have like Fancy Franz from up in northern Washington. Wow. And, she carries 900 varieties of ferns and more than you, huh? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Have a lot. I thought, I, yeah. <laughs> you think we're crazy with ferns? With our, yeah, we only have 150 varieties. Oh, so, man. so she has a huge selection. So she's bringing, and Very it's cool. kind of funny that you know two fern nurseries are here together, but we support each other, and of she course. has things that we don't have, and oh. a lot of her customers love ferns. So definitely, yeah, yeah. And then garden art—that's really nice. It's Absolutely. always so wonderful to have in the garden as mm -hmm. an accompaniment to all your pretty plants. Yes, yes. We have four four garden artists here. Um, one does ceramics, one does uh, uh, leaf castings that you can use like, for like a bird bath or just display in the garden. Wow. And then one does uh, trugs and, and flags. We, we had some flags here in the garden. They look, they, look just, they look awesome in the garden, you know, just adds that splash of color as well as um, Mary's Metalwork. She's done some, if you look around our display gardens, if you come here, you can see a lot of the metal work she's done as well. And Very nice. Yeah, yeah, oh. absolutely. And so, you know, it's going to be a little warm today, so is there going to be food and drinks? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, oh. we have uh, the chill grills coming. Nice. And we'll have a nice selection of food and drinks available. Oh, that is yeah, great. And then what time should we be here? Uh, it starts at 10 and, and goes till 3 today, so. All right. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Well, you know, that's going to be a wonderful event. There's lovely plans to get, plus all these other vendors just to kind of stroll around and just enjoy the day. And don't forget to go through the display gardens. Please go to gardentime.tv. We'll click over to their website and get all that information. Kirk, have a great day. Thank you. You too, Judy. Well, I'm with Ed Rout at Fishingham Gardens. And Ed, a couple years ago, we were talking about, you know, making, you know, seed tape. And you can buy that in the stores. And this is kind of a fun project, you know, you can do at home. Because, you know, you get some of these seeds that are super hard to sow because they're so small. Right. But you got kind of a really creative way of making your own. Well, I actually found this, um, uh, discovered this on the internet. Um, and it's really easy to do. You just take some toilet paper. And if you're um, particular, like I am, you have something to mark the spacing of the seeds on the toilet paper. And then all you do is you take a paintbrush and some glue. It can be any sort of glue that is um, water soluble. And all you do is you dip your paintbrush in the glue and dip it in the seeds and you paint seeds on the tape. The good thing is you can either grab one or two seeds at a time or just one, space them, and you can do this in advance of planting, let it dry, and it will keep for months before you plant it. So now after you have it all, you know, your seeds are all on there, right. how do you go and plant this? So all you have to do is once you've got this rolled up, with the seeds, all you do is take it over and unroll it and take some compost or soil, place this on, on top of the soil, put your additional soil on top of it, and you're done. Nice and simple. So uh, this is kind of a super fun project, but you know, so what are the benefits of this? Well, uh, one of the large benefits for someone who's super busy like I am is it's, um, you can prep the seed tape far in advance um, and then plant it when, whenever you have time to plant it. Yeah. Um, uh, you also don't have to thin the, the seedlings. 
um, or waste seeds in Ed's world, that's a big thing. Um, and um, it's also an opportunity if you have children or uh, children of friends to get the kids involved because they can paint the seeds on the seed tape for you. Yeah, so this is a great project you can do at home, you can involve your whole family with, do it ahead of time, and they'll save you some money on your seeds. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for Lawn and Garden, available at garden centers near you. At Sagawa Nursery, we always talk about taking your garden from ordinary to extraordinary. For us, that means bringing you the newest and best plants and unique garden items to you, our customer. For you, that means we'll help you transform your garden into something that's extraordinary. We also have some great gift items and even a few surprises for inside your home, too. Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. Join us for Berries, Brews, and Barbecue, now happening three weekends in June, featuring Oregon Craft Ciders and Brews and Barbecue. Enjoy barbecue. You pick strawberries, hay rides, live music, and much, much more. It's farm fun for the whole family at French Prairie Gardens. Garden Time's Incredible Edibles. I'm at Smith Berry Barn with Joelle, and Joelle, it is berry time, and really, it's strawberry time this weekend. It is. We're getting finished with strawberries, mm. but we do still have some. We're also moving into raspberries, and mm. we have some early season obsidian blackberries, so we are starting to get where we have a lot of choices, but it is the time to get strawberries. Uh. And we have a recipe for us today, but what are you going to use? Which berry? So today we're going to use raspberries just because they're a little bit easier to work with. Strawberries are fine in this recipe. Um, this is a mix-in scone recipe okay. so that you can make a scone and put pretty much whatever you'd like in it. Um, frozen berries work really well. We're doing fresh today, so you're going to get to see me get a little messy <laughs> um, because they do tend to be a little juicier to work with. Oh, so. Sure. You can freeze ahead of time if you want to work with a little bit less mess. Huh. So. so where are we starting? So we're starting with some flour. We have all-purpose flour, and we're going to be adding some almond flour today mm -hmm. because we like the flavor of the almond flour. And then we have some regular old sugar, and we have baking powder and salt already mixed together in here. So this is a pretty simple recipe. It's things that you should pretty much should have at home. If you don't have the almond flour, you can substitute some whole wheat flour, which makes nice. a really good, nicely textured scone. Um, we're, we're going to use the food processor because I prefer to use it for my chilled butter, um, but you could do this in one bowl if you had a pastry knife and could cut the butter oh, sure. into, the, mm -hmm. into the flour. So we're gonna go straight into the All right. and food when you processor. Said, when you said about the chilled butter, so how chilled? So I like to stick mine in the freezer for a few oh, minutes. I like to cold. cut it, yep, if you see here, I've cut it ahead of time mm -hmm. when it was soft, and then I went ahead and chilled it. So it's nice and cold. We want cold butter so that we get a good rise in our scone. And then that's why I need the food processor to, sure, that'd be to hard. cut it up. <laughs> You're a strong woman, but not that strong. <laughs> and so that's how you get that puff in a scone, and exactly. it's not really flat and dense. Exactly. Oh. So we're gonna give this a few pulses. We want the butter to be kind of the size of peas, so small, you know, smaller pieces than what I started with. Okay, so that's good. And it's really good to pulse it instead of just doing it along. I do pulsing time. because I want those pieces to really get loose, mm, you know, okay. mixed up in there. So we're going back into our bowl. It's nice to see that consistency. Yeah, if you were to feel that, you'd be mm -hmm. able to see the pieces of butter right. in there. You don't want them huge, but you know, there's some bigger pieces. Mm -hmm. And then the important thing is to add the berries to the dry mix. So you don't add the berries at the end, you add them to the dry. And we just have a cup of fresh berries and we're gonna stir just to coat them. This actually helps them mix in a little bit better and stay separated instead of 
um, clumping together. So they'll make their way throughout the scones instead of getting clumped in at the end. We want to be fair and get exactly. them to every scone. We want everyone <laughs> to have a couple of berries. And then just a little well in the center. And this is a heavy cream with almond extract mix. Oh, that's a great idea to mix it all together. Yeah, so we have our almond extract and our almond flour, which gives these mm -hmm. a really nice flavor. And now it's just a hand mix. And there are two ways to shape your scones. Now, this is where it starts to get messy because the more <laughs> it comes together, the more those berries break apart. And I don't mind a little hand you know, messy hands, and so <laughs> I usually take them out of the bowl and shape them by hand on my um, baking board here. So we'll see how this goes. And it's okay they break apart. I mean, it's, it's gonna be all in the scones and you're gonna taste it and it's gonna exactly. be wonderful. So you can kind of see we're starting to get a little bit of juiciness with mm -hmm. the berries. And this is where I want to go onto my board. A clean cutting board, or this is a marble board, anything that um, I've used my counter when I knew it was clean. <laughs> Just some nice surface that you know that exactly. you can work on and abuse a little bit. And then we're just going to shape it. So if I wanted to, I just need to get the dry, you know, the rest of that dry flour in. Okay. And then I could shape this into a disc, which is what I'm gonna try to do today. Or I could throw this back into the bowl and use like a cookie scoop or an ice cream scoop. Oh, a little less traditional just, that way. And just scoop them out into, and you can see how I'm- Yeah, you could smell the raspberries though. Getting, they smell delicious. They do smell good. And this is more traditional way to make the scones because you're so cutting we're gonna, them? Yep, we're gonna end up with like a wedge of scone. Mm -hmm. So there's my lovely, <laughs> beautiful raspberry. Okay, so I have about, a, I would say an eight inch disc okay. and then I have this nice blade. I'm just gonna cut these into eight wedges. And that and makes a nice size. It does. This is the fun part, <laughs> is trying to get <laughs> them from my board. Ooh. And I see you have parchment on your cookie sheet here. Parchment, baking sheet. it definitely helps for cleanup. I think it things bake nicer on parchment, but I literally it's because it's easier to clean. <laughs> That's a good tip though. And we're going to be, in fact, you could start. Oh, right. We're going to be topping them with a little bit of the ex extra of the heavy cream. Mm. And that also can get a little messy, so. Okay. And what does this do with this cream? That's a nice idea. So this gives a nice glaze to the top, and then we're gonna sprinkle some raw sugar on top, mm. which gives a nice little crunch. And then tell us about this other trick that you do sometime uh, before baking. So before we bake, we're gonna go into the fridge or freezer. If you're short on time, the freezer is good. If you have enough time, usually I like about 20 to 30 minutes in the refrigerator just to re-chill everything that we've, you know, been handling. So my hands are warm and mm -hmm. I kind of warmed the butter up a little bit. So the fridge will re-chill everything and then I would go into the oven with it. And again, that's for a raising and making them exactly. more airy inside. Yep. So today we're going to not do that because <laughs> we're gonna show you just how to bake. But so we're gonna cook them for about 20 minutes at 400. Um, I usually check them at about 15 and sometimes rotate depending. They'll get a little bit browned. Um, we want them to be browned and kind of crispy, but not too browned. So just watch them at, the, at about the 15 minute mark and add you know, three, four, five minutes as they go. All right. Well, these smell delicious. I can't wait to taste one. Me and too. Pretty easy recipe. I'm really excited about that. Just a little bit of cleanup at the end, and we had a nice crunchy, crunchy scone with a very soft center with those fresh berries inside and that almond, that almond um, flour. So, yeah, nice. they're great. And then, how can we come out to um, pick berries? So what is going on? you would you would go to our website. We have a you pick availability page that you click on, and we 
tell you pretty much every day what's happening here. Um, right now it's strawberry season leading into raspberries. We have some early season blackberries mm -hmm. and so it does change daily. And we also require reservations. So you would go to that page, it will tell you what's available. You make your reservation starting the night before for the following day and you just want to make sure that you flag that page and check it often because it does change regularly. Uh, but it's got a wealth of information on it, plus it has all the recipes that she has on there, plus this scone recipe. So please go to gardentime.tv, click over to the Smith Berry Barn website and you can find out when you can come and pick raspberries and download this recipe. Thanks so much. Thank you. Is your garden getting tired? Don't let your garden fizzle out because of the summer heat. Stop by Wavra Farms for a refresher in summer color. We carry a great selection of plants that love the summer. Give your garden the splash of color that it deserves. Your outdoor entertaining will be more enjoyable when you are surrounded by beautiful plants, wonderful flowers, and great fragrance. Let us show you what a summer garden should be. Wavra Farms, just east of Salem, off Highway 22 at the Joseph Street exit. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Garden time is on the road again. Join us as we tour Portugal and Spain in the fall of 2021. We start in Lisbon where we tour the palaces and gardens of royalty. Then we make our way across Spain with visits to the Mesquita and the world-famous Alhambra. Enjoy the sights, sounds, and tastes of Andalusia before we end up in exciting Madrid. Local transportation, hotels, and 26 of your meals are included. Go to Garden Time Tours for more information, and we'll see you in Europe. Well, I'm here with Leonard. We're down at Dancing Oaks, and Leonard, you have some amazing, unusual plants. You got butterfly attractors, insect attractors, and just things you just don't find anywhere else. So you have a great collection that you brought out today. So what are what are we looking at here today? Oh, Ryan, I'm really glad you're here. It's uh, fun to look at plants together. People are excited about different right. plants. Uh, well, over here on the right side here, we got an interesting uh, red hot poker or nifofia. They're all native to South Africa. Uh, this one's a little different than what people have seen. Yeah, uh, usually you have that real full... Tight little club-like right. head. And uh, this is one that's more segmented and almost looks like an agave sort of bloom. Um, of course, the hummingbirds are attracted to it like I'm the sure, other yeah, ones Yeah, with too. like that big deep throat on there. Right. It's really cool. Even the hummingbirds and sometimes the um, um, oh, cedar waxwings oh, will really? go in and eat on those. Yeah. Interesting. So it gets about four feet high. Yeah, so it's, nice, a, it's nice, yeah, nice, you know, the foliage is similar, but that bloom is just super mm -hmm. cool and different. And what this little, this little guy is always fun. Oh, one. yeah, those are the Eryngiums, or sea hollies. Yeah. And they're in the carrot family, and so, um, honeybees really like those. They can work around on there for a long time. Uh, this is a species called Eryngium alpinum, okay. so it's very hardy, um, good perennial, and it has a really cool... Um, um, flower head with these bracts around that are really spiky. And I like as it opens up even more, it gets that really metallic blue yeah, color, sort of which is just striking in the gun in metal the blue kind of. Yeah, it's a very different color for a uh, blue in a flower. Right. Mm -hmm. exactly. And then what's this cute little guy here? Oh, Ryan, that is a Chinese mint bush. Um, it's a great uh, kind of woody perennial. It usually dies down to the ground for us okay. every uh, winter, and then grows about four feet in the season. Starts blooming about mid. It's summer and will bloom all the way to the long bloom, long long bloom and a nice fragrance to the foliage, which makes it deer resistant. Um, the bumblebees like but it as well, and it's drought tolerant. It's so. nice, and you know, some of the, a lot of the mint bushes aren't necessarily hardy here, but this one. This one is. This one. Yep, that's a very good long-lived plant. And so, what else we have in our little bag of tricks over here? So we've got this little guy here. This is. Oh yeah, that's a nice uh, evergreen honeysuckle. Uh, even though it's a honeysuckle, it's not fragrant but with a wonderful foliage that's really shiny and evergreen, you can forgive it for that. And uh, it's a ground cover, but it has been known to kind of creep into little crevices and actually push itself up and climb a bit, but has these nice orange flowers. Uh, but not a climbing vine, like you not might a, think about no, honeysuckle, no. but more of a, more, more of a ground more cover. sprawling ground cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of a really nice glossy 
green foliage. You know, yes. Pretty, mm -hmm. And then this little guy buried in here with this cool yoke. Oh, cool. okay. That is uh, the flannel bush, Fremontodendron. And this is a cultivar called uh, Ken Taylor, which is a cross between two species of the uh, Fremontodendron, okay. which are native to California and into Mexico. And some of them are tender, but this Ken Taylor has been hardy for us down to zero degrees. Oh, wow. Uh, big shrub, so you want to make sure you have room for it. Um, but it's also very uh, loved by the bees, honeybees. Okay. And then this guy, you know, if we're talk talking pollinators, yeah. this is a great, a great pollinator plant. It is. That is the uh, um, Sclepia speciosa, which is the, one of the primary food sources for the uh, monarch butterfly. Um, they'll lay their eggs in here, and the little guys will eat the leaves. Uh, and the flowers are really quite showy on it and fragrant. Um, nice native. And it's a plant. summertime. Mm -hmm. right, yeah. Summertime, and if it is a nice area where the uh, ground is sort of rich and not too dense, it it can run. So be aware of that. But it's we, we need to plant more for the butterflies. Right. Yeah. Which is good. So you want more, more yeah. butterflies, right? <laughs> and you can share it, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. And then this cute little guy down here. Oh, this uh, is from South America in the Chile and Argentina. It's in the potato and tomato family. Uh, it's called Fabiana, so it's sort of like a heather uh, and, and looks, or almost a conifer, uh, but it has these right. interesting blooms on it, little funnel-shaped um, violet blooms, uh, summer blooming at evergreen, which is nice. Right, which is cool. Mm -hmm. And then this guy with all the spotted cool leaves and this great, great bloom. Yeah, we love the pineapple lilies, another, like the Nyphophias from South Africa. Right. And um, this one is called uh, bicolor, it's a species and this really wonderful uh, purple uh, margin to the little yeah, that, bracts the here edge, at the top. Edges on those are just, so, looks, yeah. looks fake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then these buds will open up to these purple spotted green flowers. So they're really just starting to, the show's just starting on this. And uh, Eucomus comes from the name meaning uh, good head of hair. So this oh, is this little okay. head of hair there. So. It's got a little mop on the Yeah, <laughs> mopped up, so. And then last but not least, you know, this wonderful plant, you know, just coming into bloom is always a showstopper. Yeah, the, this is uh, the Arisema. It's native to uh, Asia. Well, we have North American near on as well, but the most diverse populations are in Asia. This is a, a Japanese species. And we've tried a lot of Arisema, Jack in the Pulpit, but this one is one that has persisted the best in the garden. Okay. Some have come and gone because of winter wet. This seems to tolerate our conditions well and can get much bigger than this uh, here in the pot. But um, a cool leaf that th these are usually pollinated by little uh, gnats or small flies. This some of their arms don't have a great fragrance. This one is kind of in the neutral area. Okay. So. It's okay. but, the, but the bloom on it is, is, yeah, is quite unusual. What, what right. you're after. Mm -hmm. So you know you have this you know amazing selection. You guys are open. Yeah, we're open Wednesday through Sunday, uh, nine to five uh, during the week, and Sunday ten to four. Okay. And yeah, you know, and we're we're out here. It's a little little ways to get out here, but as you know, it's a beautiful drive to get out mm -hmm. here, and it's you know well worth you know viewing these you know stunning gardens. But you know people aren't necessarily wanting to come out. You know, you can purchase them online too. Under right. Your yeah, they can uh, peruse the catalog online and see what we've got, and um, uh, they can see what the selection is. They'll have to uh, take into account that either they want to drive down and pay for the gas, or us packing and shipping. So be, whatever's convenient for them. Right. But yeah, we definitely welcome you to come down. It's wor worth the drive. You know, go through and walk through the you know the stunning gardens, and you'll definitely find things you've never seen anywhere else. So, you know, Leonard, it's a pleasure to come down and, and meet with you and see all these great plants and to come out and visit the garden. So, you know, make sure you know, go to your website or you can go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over. So, Leonard, great. always a pleasure. Thank all you. All right. Thank you very much, Ryan. Garland Nursery, a must-stop destination for those that want to play with plants and grow with their garden. Whether you are a new or a seasoned gardener, Garland Nursery can help fulfill your gardening desires and your landscape needs. From organic veggies, trees and shrubs, to colorful blooms, from the newest trends in garden supplies and garden decor, shop Garland Nursery to find that perfect plant or piece that fills you and your garden with delight. It's always a beautiful day at Garland Nursery. 
Join us for Berry's Brews and Barbecue, now happening three weekends in June, featuring Oregon Craft Ciders and Brews and Barbecue. Enjoy barbecue. You pick strawberries, hay rides, live music, and much, much more. It's farm fun for the whole family at French Prairie Gardens. For 90 years, Espoma has one guiding principle. Develop the finest organic gardening products that work in harmony with nature, grow beautiful gardens, and make a greener world for the future. From our soil products to our plant foods, we have always been committed to the environment and sustainability. We use a vast array of natural and organic ingredients and package them in our 100% solar-powered plant. Look for the quality line of Espoma products at your local independent garden center. Espoma, organic from the beginning. What on earth is a Tay Berry? Hey everybody, I'm Brian Bauman from Bauman's Farm and Garden, and we're out in the berry field just across from the store. We are at the beginning of berry season and Tay Berry. This is actually my mom's favorite berry to make jam with. It's a cross between a red raspberry and an Aurora blackberry, and in my mind, it has the best of both worlds. It's got that kind of raspberry kick with a blackberry finish. Almost sounds like I'm describing a wine, but it, it's delicious. But here's the thing, they're, they don't want to, they don't want to come off the vine very good. They can be really soft and mushy, which means they can't be machine harvested, which means you won't see them in very large productions. This is something pretty unique that we have at Bauman Farms and um, something you're not going to find anywhere else. This berry is pretty new, 1980 something, 1979 is when it was introduced. I want to show you another blackberry raspberry cloth that's super similar, but much older. Come follow me. Okay, so we hopped a couple rows over and um, this berry right here is a Loganberry. It's another blackberry raspberry cross, but I was, <laughs> I was Googling it. This berry was developed in the 1800s by accident in Scotland. Um, what a beautiful berry, delicious. You may have tried this in our, uh, one of our signature ciders, Loganberry Bauman Cider, but they look almost exactly the same. The easiest way to describe it is Logan's look almost a little dusty. Um, like somebody drove by really fast on the gator and dusted the whole row, but they taste completely different. They only last a couple weeks. They are starting right now at the farm. So the best way to figure out which one you like the best is to head on down to the farm. For the next couple weeks, we have over a dozen different varieties of berries coming in fresh every single morning. To keep up to date on what's coming in and because they go out of season really fast, make sure you follow our YouTube page, social media, Facebook, Instagram. We'll keep you up to date on exactly what's coming in fresh. Well, I am so excited to be back at Capital Subaru with Jeff. And Jeff, we right. were here just last year and you yes. were almost, you know, into construction. We were getting closer, yeah. But tell us where we are again because this well, is amazing. We are finally open, Capital Subaru, uh, with all the features and benefits that we'll be able to go over here a little bit later. But our dog park, everything is all ready to go. So we're super excited about it and have excited about having everybody come down and check it out. Yes, because you know, it's just not the dog park or the walking trail. You have vegetable beds here yes. and people are gardening. And then you also have like the Mason Bee House. And we actually interviewed the, the um, sculptor to that. And so he's a really cool guy and he's so excited to have his bee hotel here. And, and tell me about the walking trail. Yeah, so we have a walking trail that's it's always been here in the auto group, um, but this walking trail is now has a new addition and it comes from the cherry street all the way to the pavilion so you can have a nice walk uh, stop at the outback dog park and uh, and really just come in here and have some coffee if you want sit in the pavilion relax um, there'll be food trucks so it's a it's a good walk you know and, and a nice uh, trail next to the wetlands so there's some some outdoor you know and it, it infused part of that to the dealership and really, and it's this park setting, but it's a dealership, which is yes. so interesting. But you can come and maybe you're waiting for something so you can enjoy yourself, bring your dog and have yeah. some downtime and just relax and not have to worry about when are they going to be finished with my car. Right. <laughs> 
Yeah, we kind of forget about the time because it does take a little bit of time to get your car worked on or, or purchase a car. So we wanted it to be, you know, a fun, relaxing place to be and that you do. You lose track and there's so many things to do. Yeah. So you can see all the different things and we'll go inside and it'll show you some really cool features on the inside too. Uh, so, you know, we're all plant people and there's plants here to enjoy, but you wait until you see what's in the inside. Let's it's, go. Okay, let's do it. Jeff, this is an incredible building and this yes. incredible living wall behind us. Yes. Tell me about it. Well, it's uh, 24 by 20 and uh, it's a live wall. Uh, there's a water, watering system that runs. We have our lighting. The lights are uh, set for a 12 hour cycle to give them some, some excitement and then at the same <laughs> time give them some resting time. So it's been probably one of the coolest attractions to the dealership. Oh my gosh, and so high tech. I'm thinking you guys would have had to water it when we talked about yes, it before, yes. but it's all it's all always electronic. being watered and uh, being serviced and well taken care of, so we're super excited about it. And uh -oh. A lot of people love it. A lot of pictures are being taken I by bet, it, which is great. And then what else can we see when we're inside this building? Well, we have, uh, we have Mabel, and oh. Mabel <laughs> is a 1970 uh, Subaru 360. Uh, that we purchased to put on display at the dealership here. And so it's been another one of those photograph moments. Um, her good side is showing and she's <laughs> up on underneath the stairs here. So we're excited about Mabel being here. Uh, so I we'll have to come check her out. Yeah, and then there's even a shop here. Yes, uh, we have Happy Paws <laughs> Pet Shop and uh, you can purchase, uh, you know, leashes, dog uh, and cat, uh, different things that you need for, for your animal. And um, we also have uh, Subarus has their pet supplies as well. So Aww. we have lots of things for the pets. And, and uh, so far all the dogs have loved it and <laughs> cats cats so much, you know, well, sure, sometimes. Sure. You never know. Yeah. Yep. And really it's so comfortable here. You don't feel like you're in a dealership. You just feel like I'm yes. at just a, in a lodge or something. Like a Timberline Lodge, yes, right? Definitely. That was kind of the inspiration by it. And uh, we've there's a lot of wood trim pieces and things that were all hand done um, by the uh, detention center um, here locally. And so there's just a lot of local uh, woods and pieces that are all driven by Oregon. And so we stayed true to that. Oh, that is nice. And I know there's some events coming up later this summer. Yes, we have our uh, garden time, right? Yes. Uh, uh, on Saturday, the 17th of September. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're excited about getting our first event off and uh, that's gonna be over at the pavilion. Oh, so we're nice. excited about having that. And then are you talking about the grand opening in August? Though? Yes, oh, we're talking a lot about that. <laughs> so we finally have a grand opening. This is kind of a soft opening, right? We're sure. still uh, open for business, but uh, on uh, in August, we're gonna have a grand opening and we're really excited about all the celebration we're gonna have with that. Oh, I can imagine. And yep. so you can go to gardentime.tv. We can click you over to their Facebook page, their webpage. You can find out about that to come in August and then come for the fall version of Subaru Garden Days on September 18th. It's so much, so much excitement here. Yes. So much congratulations and best wishes to you all. So exciting. Thank you. Thank you for watching Garden Time today. And don't forget about the Art in the Garden at the Oregon Garden, which is happening now through Labor Day. We'd like to wish all the dads out there a happy Father's Day. And for more information on this episode or any of our other episodes, go to gardentime.tv. Judy and I thank you for watching. We'll see you next week on Garden Time. Garden Time is on the road again. Join us as we tour Portugal and Spain in the fall of 2021. We start in Lisbon where we tour the palaces and gardens of royalty. Then we make our way across Spain with visits to the Mesquita and the world famous Alhambra. Enjoy the sights, sounds and tastes of Andalusia before we end up in exciting Madrid. Local transportation, hotels and 26 of your meals are included. Go to Garden Time Tours for more information and we'll see you in Europe. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.